Okay, so whatever you're doing right now, I want you to stop and, and take a deep breath and really think about it. And think about it on a deeper level. What does it actually take to be a top 1% salesperson in your industry? Like, what does it actually take? Not just talking about it, what does it actually take? Like the skill level. The salesperson who makes all the money, the salesperson who gets any promotion they want. In fact, they turn down promotions they don't want. They have all the respect by other salespeople and management and ownership in their company, all the respect in the world. The salesperson who leads by example, by selling the most. Well, my next guest is going to answer that question for you. Let me give you a small taste of this gentleman's background. My next guest, according to him, and I love this, yesterday's sales world is gone and success will come to those who have the skills and capabilities the new sales process demands. I, I cannot agree with you any more on that. We're going to go into that a lot today. He's an internationally recognized keynote speaker, sales trainer, and business coach. He's the author of nine books, including the best-selling Hyperconnected, uh, Selling and Networking in the 21st Century, Why Your Network Sucks, I like that, and What You Actually Do About It. We're going to talk about your book as well. He's also a, a contributor to blogs in the sales and marketing space as well. He helps salespeople, business owners, and entrepreneurs understand what he calls, I like this, the sales, is it Sherpa? Yeah. The sales, the sales Sherpa, Sherpa trademark. Nobody take that. I love that. <laughs> where he focuses on bringing the human to human connection back into the sales process, including social media, networking, and sales skills, which are key to providing value and staying relevant today. His goal is simple, help people become rock stars in their professional lives so that they can have a positive impact on those around him. He combines entertainment and education in his presentations and inspire audiences to act, to move and get hyper-connected. Now, do you want to start earlier conversations, cultivate stronger customer relationships and accelerate your sales cycle? Are you ready to discover what it means to be a sales Sherpa? I love that. If so, let me welcome to the show, Mr. D. Fish himself, David J.P. Fisher. Hello, hello. I, I just do these so I can listen to people say nice things about me. So, <laughs> you know, D, I, I love it. And here, I love I love talking with with trainers and with professionals who understand that the game of selling has drastically changed. Right. Like certain skills and techniques and principles that work with human behavior. Whereas most salespeople are still being taught skills that work against human behavior. Yep. And they wonder why they struggle so much. So thanks for joining me. Now, let's do this. I want to jump right into your story and give our listeners really a feel for your background and how you arrived at this point where you're one of the elite authorities on sales and persuasion. Maybe can you give us, a, let's say, a little bit of your background and how you learned all these skills? Sure, sure. So... My, my background in sales started back when I was still in school. Um, so, some of your listeners might be familiar with a company called Cutco Cutlery. It's a direct- the in, Yeah, the knives, and they're fantastic. But was uh, actually one of their top salespeople. Paid my way through Northwestern doing that. And uh, was really, uh, looking back, a very fortunate experience because- it's uh, direct sales is the street ball of sales, right? Yeah. You know, it's, you got to go in there, you got 45 minutes, build some rapport, do some discovery, really kind of connect with that human being. And yeah. is there, is there a solution that you can provide? Is there not? Um, but then I had the opportunity after uh, graduating to run their office in Chicago. And so yeah. over the course of about five years, interviewed over 10,000 people, trained over 1500 sales reps, yeah. Uh, literally thousands of hours of experience one-on-one -on -one and one to group sure. working with people. Yeah. So that was, that was kind of uh, the, the, the basis of yeah. my sales career. But then, you know, because I'm also a big, uh, I'm a big honking nerd and proud of it, was really spending a lot of time reading and diving in, not only to some of the, the classics in our industry, yeah. but also a lot of the behavioral economics that was coming out, the neurobiology, like yeah. trying to figure out what makes people tick. And so that, yeah. that, that was really informing how I work with people. And then when digital came around and social media came around, was yeah. kind of an early adopter. Yeah. And looking at how that, how we could actually still build relationships instead of replacing our in-person uh, relationship, actually using it as an additional tool. Sure. And, you know, 
that's that's kind of that was those are those were the three pillars and you know i started so you my started own you started group. learning yeah. techniques to work with yeah. the, your human with human behavior how that works with sales and psychology and and really persuasion right how and why yep. someone is persuaded and or not persuaded which is a big deal now let's talk about your book yep. let's talk about hyperconnected selling and networking in the 21st century why your yeah. network sucks and and what to do about it. i love that headline <laughs> right in your face who did you write this for and why? By the way, those are two different books. So you got to buy both. You can't. <laughs> I started with the networking book and, and really that came from my own experience starting a consulting firm and a training practice in, in my career because it was specifically built through networking. Okay. So I met a lot of people networking and realized that most people do suck at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, took, I, I think I realized that those of us in the sales world who have a ton of exposure working one-on-one -on -one with people, sure. you know, whether or not you know those skills naturally, you develop them. Yeah. And I found that a lot of people were thinking of networking just as this transactional, horrible experience where you have bad appetizers, you're at a conference trying to make something happen. And so I really wanted to focus people on relationships. And then, you know, was teaching people uh, these skills about networking and realized that Sales had come to where networking was, where it's relational and not transactional. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of where I uh, really focused on helping more of the sales profession really understand that it was about the humanity. Because I really feel over the last decade, we've kind of given all of our control over to machines and thought like, hey, I just need a, a good drip campaign or good email or AI is going to take care of all of my work. No, I mean, now more than ever, it's that human to human connection. We have well, because ourselves. human beings base their buying decisions on emotion, not logic, yep. right? Brain studies prove that it's 100% emotion. I mean, that's just facts, right? So AI is not going to bring out that emotion. It's not going to bring out that deep emotion. You know, maybe if it's a transactional sale, like I'm signing up for a magazine for $10 a month, yeah. completely different than if you're you know, paying 50 or $100,000 for a piece of software, or you're buying a, a $500,000 house, you're talking about bigger price points. Now, I have to ask you, yep. all over YouTube, you talk about the sales Sherpa path. What is that? Like, how, what, what do you actually mean when you say that? Yeah, so for me, being a sales Sherpa is really positioning yourself as a trusted guide, Yeah, as really the resource that your buyer is going to turn to to help make their buying decisions uh, easier, help make their buying decisions more quickly and to remove the risk from their buying decisions. Cause yeah. we forget that most of our buyers don't buy every day. We sell every day, but they don't buy every day. Yeah. And so there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of um, uncertainty. And um, we have to be able to help them through that process. Yeah. And a big part of it I find actually comes before we actually ever start selling. And so okay. one of the things that's really critical is that we are using as salespeople, all of the digital tools we have available to mm -hmm. position ourselves with our, our prospects, with our clients, things like social media or digital sure. communication. So that we're, we're there uh, within that buyer's journey before they ever, ever get to the point where they're going to actually talk to us. Right. right. So you're almost, like warming, you're almost warming them up where they view you as more of a the trusted authority before we maybe have even talked to them before or that seed's been. It's hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Look, again, we go back to the evolution of sales. It used to be 20 years ago. I'm going to keep calling somebody until I find somebody who has a problem right then. I'm going to try to sell them. Right. That doesn't work anymore because if it's that, if your business is that transactional, get out of that business because computers will do it better. Technology sure. will do it better. Yeah. But if we can position ourselves and go, Hey, you might not need me right now, yeah. but I want to be, I, I want to be able to build a relationship, show that I have credibility as an expert, as a resource, so yeah. that tomorrow, three months, a year down the line, when you're sitting there in that boardroom going, hey, we need this new piece of software, yeah. the person in, the, in that meeting goes, hey, I'm going to call Jeremy because he knows this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's give him a ring. Yeah, that's more of the authority. Now, let's talk a little bit about the technology. What is What has technology changed about the sales process and what hasn't changed? Well, how many hours do we have? <laughs> the, 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 the short version is that technology, I really think, has taken a lot of the transactional responsibilities away from salespeople. Like, and again, if you have a purely mechanistic sales process, right, a small price point, all those things, you're, that's not the business we're going to be in or we're going to need humans sure. for. 
What technology, though, has done, while it's closed that door, it's opened the door to really having multi-channel approaches to our prospects and to our clients. Okay. These days, it used to be you had to meet somebody in person or call them. That was it. That's all you had. Then we had fax machines. Ooh, sexy. Right. Now I can have a, a LinkedIn conversation. I can put a post on LinkedIn. I can be on Twitter. I can be on yeah. Facebook. I can send a text. Uh, I can have a YouTube video. A yeah. lot of this is asynchronous, meaning I can create this content now and share it with them when they want to digest it. Okay. And so I think that to to really look at the successful salesperson in the future, hmm. not that they have to be a marketer, yeah. but they have to understand some of these kind of personal branding and marketing skills yeah. to position themselves as the resource so that they are the go-to person. Why is that person, so important uh, that they're proactive? proactive? Why is it so important that they're proactive in building that brand in their market? Explain a little bit more into that. Well, yeah. I mean, kind of going back to, again, positioning yourself before they ever, uh, the prospect ever needs you. That's yeah. definitely part of it. But it's also, you know, if you think about how much information is assaulting us every day. Sure. I mean, for everybody listening, think about how many emails you got today. Yeah. Think about how many notifications you got today. Every prospect you're working with has that, if not more. If you're selling, for example, into the C-suite or any leadership role, I mean, hundreds of emails a day. So if you're not being proactive, mm. you're not being seen at all. I mean, that's why McDonald's and Coca-Cola spend millions and millions of dollars a year advertising products we already know about. Sure. But they want to make sure, hey, I get hungry, I get thirsty. Yeah. Who's the first person? Who's the person about, I the first think company. about, right? And that's what we need to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah I Who's love on, that. And the question I ask is: Are you on the radar? I, I tell people a lot in the social media world: it's it's not about being a quote unquote influencer, but be a micro influencer. Yeah. Who are the yeah. 100, 150, 200 people that you need to, to make sure that when they think about your industry, they think about you. And that's really the the goal. What do you think is happening to salespeople right now that are not? becoming micro micro influencers? Like what's happening to them? They're becoming obsolete, whether they know it or not. And, and, and this is very industry specific, but I definitely see uh, industries that had maybe a, a, an older workforce. I've seen kind of this giving up, sure. like, hey, I'm just going to, I'm going to retire in five years. I'm just going to like ride it out. You know, I, I see a lot of, um, and I definitely see this especially with the younger sales people, sure. they don't, there's no strategy, but there's a lot of activity. I'm just going to make more phone calls. Right. Yeah. We, we need to, we need to have sales professionals and as sales professionals, we need to be strategic. We need to be thoughtful. We need to be creative, mm -hmm. hustle and, and drive and grind. Those are all great. Sure. But this is not just a, a mechanical world, right? If I just make enough phone calls and be successful, you have to bring something to the party. It, and that's really, I said, that human to human element, that relationship. That it's more about the quality of the conversation rather than the quantity 100%. of the conversation, right? Because like, who wants to talk to 100 people to maybe have three or four good conversations? I'd rather talk to 10 people and have five to seven great conversations. It's more about yeah. the quality of that conversation. And I think you're right. So many salespeople have that hustle muscle mentality because that's what they've been taught. <laughs> they need to call right. more leads and they're just somehow going to magically make more sales. But all that come, all that goes out the window once the prospect answers the other line. And now you have to know what to say, or more importantly, ask to get that prospect to want to engage with you rather than just commoditize you and say, oh, this person's trying to sell me something. How do I get rid of them? I, I, you just use the word commodity. That's exactly right. A lot of salespeople are getting commodified. Yeah. What, what we did you know, kind of, in the, I mean, let's get, you know, historical, like the 70s, 80s, 90s, yeah. we tried to make salespeople machines, yeah. right? We tried to be like, how can I get you to make more phone calls? How can I get you to just sure. to do the mechanical nature of our business more? But now the machines have caught up and they're, they're, they're really good at being machines. They can auto dial, they can send a, a drip cam email campaign. campaign. Yeah. We don't need to be machines. We need to be yeah. humans. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of resistance in the sales world mm. because, um, Especially, and, and I think you and I have, could both list these, you know, old school trainers at, it has sure. to be about hustle. Yeah. And, and we think that if we're talking about quality, it's, it's about being lazy. Yeah. And, and I make the argument all the time that being a good sales Sherpa is actually just as much, if not more work sure. than just, you know, you smiling have to be and skilled. You have to be skilled. Yeah. You have to have skills. You have to know the right questions to ask at the right time in the conversation to help the prospect find problems 
that they didn't even think they have, right? Because we have to understand mm -hmm. when we're talking to our prospects, most of them don't know they even have a problem or maybe they <laughs> right. don't know what their problem actually is or maybe they know a little bit about the problem, but maybe they don't know how bad it is or really what are the consequences if they don't do anything about solving it, right? So we have to become right. what we call professional problem finders and then problem solvers, not you know like most salespeople, product pushers, that get completely right. commoditized. It's a it's a main that, that, it's a crazy difference. That's that's exactly right. And I think what also is critical to remember is that a lot of times our our prospects they might know they have a problem. Yeah. But they don't know what it is. They don't know how to describe it. The, I think the doctor analogy works well. Sometimes you go and you're like, I have a my stomach hurts. I, I don't know what is causing that. There there could be literally hundreds of reasons why, yeah. but I don't know why. And, the, and if it's a good doctor, and if you think about the medical professionals that you've met that you like, they go, well, let me start asking questions. Is it yeah. this? Is it yeah. that? Or yeah. is it connected to something else? Yeah. And they hone in on the right problem. And then they go, okay, it's this. Yeah. Here's the solution. And then you accept yeah. the solution because they've helped you find the right. root cause of the problem and how the problem is affecting them, not just the surface level problem. That's a major difference exactly. if you want to be a top, top income earner. As a sales professional, it's a night and day difference in your sales uh, ability, your closing percentages, your income you make. It's all dependent on mm -hmm. your questioning ability. It's your it's your question skills. You know, today's consumer doesn't want to be talked at and sold to; they want to be asked and understood. That's the major difference. Right now, let's. I, I want to yeah. jump into this a little bit more. What and I, I love the conversation. What What do you think? And in, in your thoughts, like, what is the biggest challenge? you see when sales professionals get into a sales conversation with the prospect? <laughs> I, you, I think you kind of touched on it already is that we just want to go to our pushing, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think there, there's a disservice that a lot of sales professionals have. Um, that, that we've done a disservice where we talk about sales is talking, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, a lot of people are like, I got into sales because I like to talk to people. It, 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 the ability to, to communicate is important, but it's, are you um, listening? Mm -hmm. And I would even say, maybe even on, on a more fundamental level, one of the biggest challenges most sales professionals have is that they're afraid of making that human connection. Mm. Um, and I use the word fear specifically because that's why we like having the script and we like pushing because I don't have to worry about making them like me or if they do, I'm just like, I'm a little nervous and I understand that. A sales is, there's a lot of fear in there. Sure. But okay, so I, I got somebody on my demo call or I got the sales conversation. So now I got to just go through that script yeah. versus the ability to, and going back to my foundation, one of the things I really learned early on, which was, valuable was to, to sit down at a kitchen table with Mr. and Mrs. Jones, knowing I got a bag of knives that I want to show them, but just having that human conversation, sure, building, you know, go old school, no like, and trust until they know, like, and trust you, they don't care what you're, you're pushing. Yeah. So I, I think that that's the, the big thing to realize. The other is that even though our customers or our prospects, I should say, don't necessarily know how to buy if they don't buy what you're selling often. Yeah. They have information. Sure. We used to we used to give information to salespeople because it was hard to find it. Yeah. Now if you go into a, a sales call, they're like, well, I looked at your blog. I've seen your three your your three competitors uh websites. I've seen the reviews. I just you know pinged my friend who's a CMO at another company and they like so if you go in there and regurgitate information, yeah. it doesn't work. You start asking questions mm -hmm. Huge. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and consumer, we need to help those people do that. Yeah. I mean, today's consumers, the info, and we live in the information age, right? So, because of the power of the internet and especially the power of social media, we live in a completely different age. Like you said, when you're talking to a prospect, yeah. they already know all about your company, your products, your services, your price points, how long you've been in business, who your competitors are. They know everything about you by simply doing a Google search on their phone, right? <laughs> and because of that newfound power, right. They'll no longer be manipulated or pushed by pushy salespeople because they know they have many choices to choose the exact product or service that you sell. So unless you learn skilled questions right. that help them uncover problems in their own mind that they didn't even know they had or they didn't know how bad those problems were, unless you know how to do that to help build urgency in their own mind that it's their decision to move forward, 
you're going to really struggle in 2020 in selling for sure. hundred percent. doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Well, and even going back to an earlier part of our conversation, not only can they find out everything about your company, they can find out about you. Yeah. Right. I do this. If, if I'm having somebody come and sell me really any meeting, I do look them up on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. You know, do they have any customer recommendations? Are people saying good things about them? Are they, do they look like a credible source? Right. So we have to remember that we're not going in there starting from scratch. Yeah. We're, we're part of, I, I call it in hyper-connected selling, a sales matrix. It's yeah. not the linear process anymore. There's so many different sources of information influence. And so we have to navigate that and help our prospects navigate that at the same time. So true. What, 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 and I'm going to ask you this question. Like, what are, what's a good question that a salesperson listening to us today can use in their sales process to help build urgency to move that person forward in that sales conversation rather than they want to think about it down the road? So one that I like to use, and, and I will put an asterisk here, you have to have done the groundwork first, right? If you ask this too early, you haven't earned the right to ask it, right? Of course. But one thing that I often ask, and, and especially, you know, because I sell just like you, we're, we're selling our services all the time. Yeah. I go, what, very simply, I'll often say, let's assume that we work together, things go well, what, and let's, let's assume that we're six months in the future, Sure. What does that look like? Yeah. And, and I very specifically am saying, what does it look like? Going back to the, uh, the psychology, we, we can visualize, we, it allows the prospect to really you know, kind of hone in on it. And then I'll ask, what happens if we don't work together? Or even specifically, what happens if you don't take movement on this? Mm -hmm. If you don't buy now, this deal's off the table. Or, hey, if you do buy now, I'll give you a discount. Yeah. I, I really think right now, the way you stress urgency is just, you, you're no matter who you're selling against, you're really selling against inertia. You're selling against the status quo. You're selling against them not doing anything. Yeah, because so if, you, if you can make them the think right about what happens. And so what you do, what this question allows them to do is kind of identify, hey, if I don't do anything, it, it'd be like a, a personal trainer saying, hey, if you don't work out, what happens? And the person goes, I'm you know, fat and uncomfortable and don't feel good like I do right now. Yeah. Would you like to change that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I love that. It's, it's what we call a consequence question because you're mm -hmm. getting them to question their way of thinking yep. of what, what's going to happen if they don't do anything about solving. Like, so John, what are, the, what, are, what are the possible ramifications if your company doesn't do anything about this and this keeps happening for the next several months? You know, you're getting them to question that way of yep. thinking, right? I love that question. That's an excellent question. I want everybody to write down what he just said there. I think that's awesome. Now let's go, let's go into this. You talk a lot about this, about closing without being a closer. And I, and I love that term, you know, where the whole show is closers are losers. Not that if you're making sales, you're losing. It's just, you're using old school sales closing techniques mm -hmm. and techniques from the dinosaur ages of selling in our time. Like, you know, <laughs> right. you lose a lot of sales that you could be making. So yeah. how do you close without being a closer? What does that mean in your mind? Well, for, for me, and, and there's a term I use a lot called the next question or the next step, because the reason why I don't like the term closing is because it comes from this linear world where you, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four, four step five, close, and then we're done. Right. But in this sales matrix, it's, it's actually about creating the momentum and direction for our, our prospects. And yeah. so to me, it's, it's really just recognize that anytime you have interactions with your prospects, from the very beginning to the very end, it's where are we now? What is the next step I want to take them to? That might be to have another meeting. It might be to bring in a stakeholder yeah. for the, for you to actually set up a, a demo to Getting tinier, tinier commitments that lead towards the ultimate decision of purchasing. That's right. It's, it's always incremental. And in my perspective, and, and what's funny is this is just how business has always worked. I just think we're now really recognizing or at least talking about it. When you get to the quote unquote closing question, it's never, I now have to convince you of something. I mean, one of my, in my career, one of my closing quote unquote closing questions at the end is, hey, I mean, based on everything we're talking about, it looks like, you know, I can help you with this. Do you want to work together? <laughs> you know, it's not, I have to be fancy. I'm just like, hey, I've set up a logical flow through our entire relationship. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's what, I'm, what I mean. It's not about, 
having a sexy gimmick. It's not the option clothes or the puppy dog clothes. Like that stuff does not work, especially if you're in a more of a complex selling environment. You get laughed out of the room if you use that. It's really, you know, you know, John, based on what you've told me, what we're doing might actually work for you because you know how you said, you repeat back what they said yep. and it caused you to feel like this. And it's really like, you know, how do you want to proceed from here? What would be appropriate as the next step? And yeah. just like, you Love know, people think that, oh my gosh, you're giving them control in their hands. No, you have the full control. You have the full control from that conversation because in that conversation, when you ask the right questions at the right time, they've mm -hmm. already persuaded themselves that they want to solve the problem and do that with you. Yep. So, you know, we teach what are called, we call them commitment questions where just a basic, you know, how would you like to proceed from here? What would be appropriate as the next step? Or where should we go from here? And it's yeah. just, it's very easy. Like you just said, I love that. You're just committing them to take the next step and solve what they said they wanted to solve. And I would almost argue that they do have the control. It's it, and it, because they have all the information, they have the, the choice of what to do, but we can direct them. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I would almost say that it's okay to not have control. This, this is very antithetical to the old school. I've got to like determine the velocity of the deal. I was, no, it's like, Hey, you're another human being who has, agency and power. Do, do you like, I mean, just do you like being controlled as a person? No, guess what? They don't want you to, you as a salesperson control them. They're going to resist it again. They're going to push back. But if you're just like, Hey, you want to do this, you're, you're in the driver's seat, but Hey, I've got a map out that can help you get where you want to go. Sure. That's when people go, yeah, sounds great. Let's do this. hundred percent. It, it's, yep. you know, like I said, it, it's using the right questions in that conversation that work with human behavior to get them to pull you in. Whereas traditional selling techniques basically teach you certain yep. things to say that push them and they do what? Push back right. because that's what humans beings doing. So you're automatically creating resistance. You're creating objections that you don't have to create in their mind. So you got to right. get rid of the switch. I love it. Now, where are some good places to invest so everybody listening today, like where are some good places to invest their attention to find success now and in the future as a sales professional? Uh, you mean besides listening to this podcast and my exactly, podcast, right? <laughs> right buying all our books and, and trades. You know, I think it really at a foundational level is about investing in some of these quote unquote soft skills that we're talking about, whether it's um, emotional intelligence, communication skills. Uh, we spoke about creativity. The idea of asking questions, you know, even though we're saying, hey, it's as simple as asking questions, that can be really hard, right? To, to really on a human level, get good at asking questions and sitting still. <laughs> For example, if somebody that gives you an objection and you want to answer it. So I, I really suggest that you, you look at those kind of personal developments. Yeah areas as much as professional development. You know, whenever I've been a sales manager or coach for an organization, I've said, hey, what are the, the hard skills we're looking at? But then what are you doing as an individual? Whatever the areas that you need to work on and you know what it is, mm -hmm. you know, what what does that mean? Whether again, it's, it's training, it's books, heck, going to therapy, if you need a little therapy, like that, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, th those are some of the areas that I really suggest people to look at. Uh, yeah. Not just the latest sales book, but again, it, hey, even finding some behavioral psychology books, fantastic and really yeah, helps understand. My major in college, behavioral science and human psychology, 100%. Yep. So, hey, uh, D Fish, I, I love the name. I love, I love the tagline, D Fish. You got to trademark that. Can't thank you enough for being on here today. Do you have any final thoughts or advice for our listeners? The world is evolving and that's okay. Don't fight it. Surf it. Uh, you know, there's going to be a, uh, as much challenge as it, uh, change brings. It's also opportunity. So yeah. lots you know, of keep learn, just keep learning. That's yeah. all you can do. Where can our listeners learn more about you and your training? Though? Like, where do they need to go to learn more about what you do? Yeah, the best place is going to be our online home. It's davidjpfisher.com slash podcast slash closers or losers. So we got a landing page for all of the listeners. Uh, and that's got a bunch of resources, a lot of free resources on building your network, building your online presence, all that kind of great stuff. Uh, but you can also find all my books on Amazon. And uh, uh, my podcast is Beer Beats and Business. So check that out. Beer Beats and Business. That is definitely a Chicago, uh, Chicago <laughs> podcast. I love that, my friend. All right, D Fish, great to have you on here. I know you got to go, got another meeting. Talk to you soon. It's great to have you on here. Thank you so much. 
Now, if you're serious about joining the top 1%, I mean the top 1%, and you wanna experience more training content just like this, click the links right over there. Right over there, they're exactly what you need to see next. You see, I release new episodes featuring top salespeople and sales authorities, multiple six-figure, high six-figure, even seven-figure earners. And if you're new here, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button right below, right below, and join our new Facebook group, Sales Revolution. You see, it's free, and there's a link in the description below just for you. We put it there for you. Finally, I make posts on Facebook and Instagram each and every day with more tips and training. So be sure and follow me and turn on your notifications. So make a comment in the first seven minutes to any of my latest posts, share this episode, and there's a very real chance that you're gonna win some killer prizes. And here's the thing, don't sit on the sidelines. Don't be like everyone else, get into the game. Join the sales revolution, stay active, get involved, learn the right skills, and we will show you how to take your life and income to a level that most only dream about.